I wouldn't say garbage collection is one of my favorite topics, but I don't think it hurts to talk about it a little bit. It's pretty straightforward. It's actually very involved if you want it to be. There's plenty of writing out there as far as garbage collection algorithms go and that sort of thing. And I don't know everything there is to know about .NET's garbage collection simply because it works and I kind of don't care at that point. I'm sorry, it's just one of those things I don't get passionate about. Here's our stack. Here's our heap. Let me come over here and make a class. I'll call it int wrapper. And the only reason I'm making an int wrapper is to wrap an int, public int wrapped int. And since this is a class, it'll go out on the heap when I instantiate it with new. I could also accomplish this with boxing, however I want to do it with a class. Let's go down here. Var wrapped one gets new int wrapper like so let me scroll out a little bit control l control v v v wrapped two and wrapped three let's change wrapped ones dot wrapped int to a one control l control v v v change this to a two three and two and three so you can see each individual object their wrapped int will be assigned to the corresponding value now let's actually execute this F10, F10. What's going to happen as far as our stack and our heap is concerned? Do you remember from several previous videos? And we have wrapped one. That is a reference that we've defined inside of the scope of a method here. So I'll say this is wrapped one. I need a thinner font here. Let's try this again. We'll do wrapped one right here. That's not thinner. Come on. Thinner. I probably didn't click it, huh? Wrapped one. Alright. And it's going to reference this object created by new here. Now, heap algorithms, the new operator, it's responsible for going out to the heap and finding a place to put an int wrapper, which in this case requires four bytes, but then we've seen in previous videos we need an extra eight bytes, so sixteen bytes total. Anyway, new is responsible for going to the heap and finding that room and then allowing us to put the object there. Well, new just doesn't kind of randomly pick whatever room there is. What it likes to do is keep this as nice and tight and organized as possible. So I'm going to take our int wrapper and instantiate it right here, like so. And so that's hopefully neater than just kind of randomly putting it out here like I do in most of my drawings. Alright, F10. That state is now set up. Wrapped to, I should actually put the value here. Remember the default values are zero. The new again has to go out of the heap. Oh, is there room for another int wrapper? There is. It would make sense to put it right here, right next to the other one, so we don't clutter up our heap too much. So this will be wrapped to, put the uh, default zero there, and the reference wrapped to is residing on the stack. And there we go. We're referencing that object. Very good. F10, wrap three again. Same idea. New has to come out here. I'll put wrap three right here. Looks good so on and so forth wrapped three reference that very nice and then oh one two three so here we go one and two right here like so and then three hopefully this isn't too boring now i want to change this up a little bit watch what i'm going to do i'm going to come in here We'll hit Shift F5 to stop the debugger, get rid of our yellow line. And then I'm going to come, actually, before we even need to run this, well, we'll do that a little bit later. I'm going to, I'm going to come put a gc.collect here, which is me telling the garbage collector, hey, if there's any trash out on the heap here, please go collect it. Right? And, and the garbage collector is actually, it, it's a background thread, constantly in the background. It's kind of a low-priority, sleepy thread. And it'll wake up and collect when we need it to. We don't need to explicitly tell it to. But this is nice. I can say, hey, go go clean up right now. And, uh, in fact, if we hover over that, forces an immediate garbage collection of all generations. That's another garbage collection thing, generations. But I'm not really into that, like I already said. Go collect. Well, is there any trash out here that needs to be collected? And it probably could be from other things happening before we got into main, but 
maybe the .NET set up some objects and that sort of thing. But as far as our objects go, no. Okay, we have a valid reference to the wrap three, a valid reference for wrap two, and a valid reference for wrap one. So all these are legitimate objects, nothing to collect there. All right, but then what if I come here and say, hey, wrap two, you get null. All right, let me grab my eraser here. Wrap two gets null. You're no longer referencing your buddy out on the heap. Okay, well, this object's like, eh, I've been abandoned. Well, yep, it happens. Okay, and then I come in here and I say, hey, gc.collect. Well, now this object is up for, up to be collected. Okay, it's no longer needed. So the garbage collector, and it kind of does this in stages, but you can go read about it online if you want to, but essentially it's going to come here and mark this object and say, hey, you're done, you're out, thank you, I need this room again. But then the garbage collector sees, hey, there's this kind of this gap here. And and at that point, it starts to compact the heap, meaning what if I wanted to put a, an extremely large object on the heap? Say, say the object would take up all of this room right here. It would need all of this and this room right here as well. Okay. Is there enough room to put this extremely large object in memory. Well, yes, there is. The problem is, if we put it in like we've done here, it's going to chew up part of three. But if I took this three and defragmented this heap, compacted it, brought this three down, then all of a sudden I'd have room for this big green object. So let's just do that. I'm going to take three and give up that room for that really large green object, that big green monster, and we'll compact three down to here like that. There you go. And then, oh, I need to update all references to this object. We have wrap three here. So the garbage collector, this is kind of part of why we call it managed code, because the garbage collector is changing your references without letting you know. But you don't care. As long as our reference is always legit, we're totally fine with that. So there you go. That's, that's why the garbage collector will compact data. Now, I'm not going to do too much on garbage collection in my videos. I'm sorry about that. If it really fascinates you, uh, there's plenty of reading. I want to actually prove to you that this is how this is going to go down, though. Let me take that off the screen. and You can stop the video now if you're happy. Otherwise, hang on. I'm going to bring up the memory windows and debugging here. So let me control. I've actually started to learn the hotkeys for this. Control uh, DY for the first memory window, and then Control DR for the registers. Let's uh, instantiate wrapped one. I know EAX has an address close to wrapped one, so I'll copy the value out of the EAX register, paste it here, and here, as we've seen in other videos, here is our wrapped one object. I'm going to do red right here. Okay, here's the type, type pointer and the sync block index, and then here's the wrapped in. Now watch what happens. I'm going to F10, and you'll see wrapped two, just like I drew in the drawing I took off the screen. I think we're done with these registers. Wrap two. Hey, look at that. There's wrap two. We'll do that in green. Okay, here's wrap two, like so. And then wrap three. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at this heap. It looks like a stack, doesn't it? But it's not a stack. It's a heap, meaning we can put objects really wherever we want to and pull them out and that sort of thing. My son told me. <laughs> I don't know how he thought this up. Ten years. Well, more than 10 years programming for me, and I'd never heard of this before. My son came up with it. He says, of course, a of course a stack is a LIFO structure, Daddy. If you pull the value out of the middle of it, it would all come crashing down, and then you would have a heap. Does that make sense? You'd have a heap of stuff. Jenga? You ever played Jenga? Anyway, all right. Watch these values here. Okay, this is wrapped 1's int, and wrapped 2's int, and wrapped 3's int. So we will see... One, two, three. So F10, there's our one. F10, there's our two. F10, here's our three. Now I'm going to say GC collect. I want you to pay attention to this. Is anything going to change? F10, no, we saw that another object was moved here, but no, our data is legit. That's good. Now we're going to abandon wrapped two. Notice how I did red, green, blue. Okay, wrapped one, wrapped two. Wrap three, red, green, blue. Uh, we're going to abandon our green one here in the middle. Okay. Wrap two gets null. Nothing changes out here. And then I'm going to say GC collect. Well, 
Bye bye. Okay, pay attention to what happens. F10. Look at that. Look at that. We still have wrap one and wrap two. But then the garbage collector saw there was a little bit of room here and shoved something in there. So that's kind of cool, right? Anyway, garbage collection in a brief nutshell. Again, there's plenty of reading out there if you want to read about it and, and really learn these algorithms inside and out.